Uh, so, uh, the topic of my lecture is uh, democracy, uh, democracy and uh, the rights of minorities. Is there a fair balance in the heterogeneous society? Uh, democracy is a core value of uh, European Union. Uh, the Article 2 of the Treaty of the European Union states that the Union is founded on the values of respect for human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality, uh, the rule of law and uh, the respect for the human rights, including the rights of persons belonging to minorities. Uh, this article, uh, to my mind, constitutes uh, not only the fundamentals of uh, European Union, uh, it reflects to the essence of European civilization. Uh, democracy, perhaps, is the biggest achievement of European civilization, or more generally, even Western civilization at all. Uh, the weaknesses of democracy and uh, deficiencies of democracy are often criticized. Uh, today, uh, some people argue that uh, in face of uh, pandemic, uh, the decision making in non-democratic societies is more effective. Of course, I don't think so. Uh, really, uh, China have coped with this uh, pandemic uh, may be more effective than European states, uh, uh, but uh, they haven't enough and valid information about real situation here. Uh, and uh, in spite of that, most uh, dictatorships now and former dictatorships promote themselves as a democracy. Uh, we can look to any constitution of any state and we can find the statements about uh, the states constitute themselves as democratic states, as social states, as states of uh, rule of law and uh, justice. Modern democracies are primarily characterized by a republican system of government where citizens elect representative to serve their interests and the decisions are made by majority of the votes. Is the democracy only about the rights of minority? Uh, look at uh, these words, the words of Franklin Roosevelt. I've got a lot of quotation for today uh, because so many Polishians, philosophers, intellectuals uh, discussed the issues of democracy. And now I really have more questions than answers. And I look for the answers in uh, their wisdom, their quotation. That is why there are so <laughs> many quotations in this presentation. So uh, Franklin Roosevelt wrote that, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, he wrote that no democracy can long survive this which does not accept the fundamentals to its very existence, the recognition of the right of uh, minorities. Uh, I ask you to look at these uh, two pictures. Uh, maybe they are familiar to you. And maybe uh, someone will uh, tell me uh, what do they mean? No? <laughs> uh, the first one is a, a referendum champion poster. It has been used before the referendum in Switzerland by the supporters of prohibition of minaret construction. Uh, there were only four minarets in Switzerland before this referendum uh, and about 5% of Muslims in the country's population. In uh, 2009, Swiss waters have supported a referendum proposal to uh, ban the building of new minarets in Switzerland. More than 57 of electors voted in favor of the ban. In an official statement, the uh, government said that it accepted the decision. Uh, 
uh, it was stated that uh, the Federal Council respect this decision and the construction of new minarets in Switzerland is no longer permitted. So, as we can see, the result of democratic opinion building and uh, democratic decision-making process, uh, in uh, this case, uh, to ban the building of minarets, is a violation of human rights. Uh, is there a democracy, democracy without human rights? How should the reaction look like when a majority decision discriminates a minority? Of course, the uh, direct democracy needs a human rights-based juridical institution protecting the minorities from a dictatorship of majority. But on the other hand, can the respect for the rights of minorities lead to a violation of sovereignty and security of the state? And what should be a fair balance? Uh, these questions uh, gain more importance every day as we live in a pluralistic society with a variety of values and goals. Uh, so there is no democracy without human rights, there is no democracy without rights of minorities. It's argued that the legal and juridical mechanism procedure are the tools for protection of the right of minority and balancing different interests in pluralistic society. But are they always effective? Are they applicable to all cases? Uh, in 2011, the European Court of Human Rights officially uh, dismissed the complaint by the Muslim League uh, of Switzerland and four other organizations. Uh, the plaintiffs claims to, uh, claimed uh, that the ban of construction of minarets is a violation of the rights for freedom of religion and uh, religion discrimination. Uh, the judges uh, in Strasbourg, having examined the case, concluded that the applicants are not direct victims of violation. Uh, so the court um, evaded from direct decision and uh, evaluation of lawfulness and uh, validity of the ban. Uh, the judges did not confirm uh, that the ban had any uh, particular consequence for the personal relationships of applicants. At the same time, plaintiffs are neither indirect victims of the new law, since uh, not, none of them confirmed that he or she could be uh, could be in the near future plan to build a mosque with a minaret. Uh, the situation in Switzerland shows us uh, the case of human rights violation under democratic decision making and the absence of legal tools to protect the violated rights. And uh, there is no such violation in the second example. Uh, the second picture, as you can see, illustrates uh, the results of uh, Brexit referendum in the uh, United Kingdom. Uh, the United Kingdom has voted to leave the European Union by uh, 52% person, uh, person to uh, 40, 48%. Yeah. Uh, Leave won the majority on votes in England and Wales, but not in Scotland. Uh, but even more interesting is uh, to look at the uh, voting people, uh, 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 at the age of the voting people. You can see uh, in the diagram that the majority of uh, young people voting for European Union prospects of United Kingdom. In fact, the older generation uh, determinates the future of the young people. Um, the accepting of the results of election or referendum is a key principle of uh, the democracy governing. In election and referendums, uh, there are always uh, are winners and losers, and losers have to accept that they lost. So there is no human rights violation. 
but the interests of huge number of people are obviously not taken into account. Uh, a similar thing happened in the last presidential and uh, parliamentary election in Ukraine. Uh, the people in my country uh, are disappointed now. Uh, they uh, tired of war, they tired of poetry, and uh, they tired of the corruption. Uh, they uh, voted against the previous government, uh, hoping for a better life, for a better future. But they have no idea how to achieve this future, how to achieve this uh, better life. Moreover, uh, they were voted for um, political leaders without political program and without no long-term strategy. Uh, after voting uh, at the polling station, uh, a woman uh, said me something like, um, uh, I do not know what will happen, but it will be different. Thus, the people who required a clear program, uh, a, a concrete actions, and a political plan appeared to be a minority. That was only uh, protesting voting, but democratic one. Uh, and now, there is no juridical, there is no legal tool to balance the interests of different groups in such case. Uh, today, even in uh, established democracies, uh, there are other sections of society which commonly include immigrants, uh, migrants, workers, prisoners, young people before uh, the certain age uh, who are not uh, given a right to vote, even though they, uh, many of them uh, might pay taxes and uh, they all are obligated to obey the law of uh, the country or the state where they live. Uh, the number of mobile U European Union citizens of voting age uh, has increased significantly. Most member states have experienced an increase in this population group uh, and the overall number uh, of these people is about 11% uh, and about uh, uh, 40 million of uh, populations. It's according to the European Commission uh, report. Uh, so, uh, what in rights of European Union citizens who live in a member state other than their own uh, have the right to vote and stand as a candidacy in European Parliament uh, elections and uh, municipal elections organized by a member state. Uh, this must be done under the same conditions as for the country of their own nationals. Even if European Union citizens do not have the host country's nationality. Uh, I know uh, that uh, despite these rules, citizens still face uh, major obstacles in ex exercising their voting rights. Uh, some member states uh, require nationals of the member states of other member states uh, to uh, fulfill additional conditions uh, that are not allowed by European Union law. Uh, for example, uh, the holding of national identity card issued by the member states of residence. Uh, other member states uh, do not adequately inform European Union citizens from different member states about their uh, electoral rights. Uh, and again, uh, uh, according to the report of the European Commission in uh, 2018, on average only 54% uh, of European Union citizens know about their right to vote and stand as a candidate in uh, municipal elections in their member states of residence. And this is significant decrease uh, compared to uh, 2012. Uh, at that time, 66% uh, uh, European Union citizens knew uh, about uh, this right. 
Uh, also, European Union law uh, grants uh, European Union citizens the right to participate in municipal and European elections in the member state uh, where they uh, reside. It provides no such right uh, with regard to national elections. Uh, moreover, according to the legislation, legislation of several member states, uh, their nationals uh, lose the right to vote in national elections if they have lived in another member state for a certain period of time. Uh, European citizens of those member states are not able to participate in any national elections, neither in a member state of origin nor in the member state of residence. Uh, they are deprived of one of their most important uh, political rights, uh, just because they exercise their right of free movement. Uh, a number of member states uh, restricts uh, their to become members of uh, political parties. Uh, the European Commission is taking specific action to resolve this problem, uh, which, which will uh, stop citizens from ex, uh, exercising their voting rights. Uh, it requests uh, member states to ensure the proper information about voting uh, rights, removing additional administrative requirements for registering to vote, allowance to become members of uh, or found uh, political parties in the member states, etc. Uh, uh, so the risks of uh, double voting or double candidacy are also exist. Uh, and improvement of informational exchange between member states to prevent uh, these cases is uh, very important. Uh, I think that uh, there is no reason uh, that the provision of participation of experts in national election would be possible in the nearest time. Uh, until member states uh, maintain their sovereignty and national governments are the main executors of political power, uh, the national citizenship will be a key condition for uh, voter eligibility at uh, national election. However, the political rights should expand in uh, European Union uh, uh, for European Union citizens. Uh, they uh, need be integrated uh, uh, in the political life as well as they are integrated in the communities of uh, member states of residence. Uh, you can see uh, on the next slide the extraction from uh, court decision, the decision of uh, European Court of Human Rights. And this is about uh, the other uh, group of restricted people. Uh, case of Hearst uh, is concerned the restriction of prisoners' voting uh, rights in the United Kingdom. Uh, as I know, prisoners are allowed to vote in, the, uh, in 18 European countries. Now I uh, speak about uh, countries of Council of Europe, not uh, European Union member states. Uh, prisoners' rights to vote are restricted in uh, 20 countries, uh, depending on uh, such things as uh, length of sentence, uh, the crime, the type of election. Uh, in nine European countries, prisoners are not allowed to vote at all. In the case of uh, Hearst uh, in 200, uh, 2005, the European Court found that the universal ban on prisoners from voting in the United Kingdom is a violation of uh, Article 3, 3 of the First Protocol of the European Convention on Human Rights. Uh, this article uh, says uh, that the states uh, undertake to hold free election at reasonable intervals by secret ballot under condition which will ensure the free expression of uh, their opinions. Uh, but this uh, extraction, the position of the court, I think would be applicable 
to the all categories of people who are restricted in uh, their voting rights. Uh, taking into account uh, that uh, all European Union members uh, and all European countries uh, with the exception of Belarus, uh, joined the European Convention for the Protection of Human Rights and uh, Fundamental Freedoms. As you can see, uh, the court states uh, the right to vote is not a privilege. In the 21st century, the presumption in a democratic states must be in favor of inclusion. Uh, universal suffrage had become the basic principle. Uh, modern democracies have a lot of troubles. Uh, key problems uh, this uh, democracy are water's apathy, uh, the rise of nationalism, the populism, the weakness of institutions, a risk of uh, creating dictatorship through democratic procedure, and many others. Uh, for instance, we know that the majority of uh, modern di dictators and uh, authoritarian leaders in the world came to power through the democratic elections, through the democratic procedure, and only a part of them uh, in a cope. All these problems increase in divided and polarized societies. People around the world still regard democracy as a majority power. Uh, the American uh, Political Science Review published a study uh, by political scientist Christopher Klassen, who claims uh, that democracy is losing popularity even in countries uh, where uh, the democratic institutions are strong. Uh, based on data from 155 countries, the scientist concludes that the strengthening of democratic institution, the approval uh, of democracy, uh, the approval of democracy as rule falls, and vice versa. As soon as they decline, the democratic aspiration of society grows. Among developed countries, only in the Scandinavian states, the level of support for democracy is high, uh, as high as the conformity of their political system to democratic standards. Even in states where there are no problem with democracy itself, the problem with approval exists. And the critical point for our discussion, uh, according to Klassen, once government take care of protecting the rights of minority, there is a disappointment in the democratic uh, system. Uh, Georg Kegel wrote, genuine tragedies in the world are not conflicts between right and wrong. They are conflicts between two rights. And these two rights are the rights of majority and the rights of minorities. Uh, being a lawyer, I can suggest uh, some juridical solution uh, based on value, based legal reasoning. Uh, but as we've seen before, it is not always efficient. There is no one size fits all solution. Uh, the complex relationship between democracy and human rights shows the need for education for democracy. Uh, education for democracy, which overcomes the reductionism uh, understanding of democracy uh, only as a will of majority. The need for human rights education, uh, value creation through teaching and learning, education for democracy and uh, education for human rights. Uh, the potential for implementing a value-based uh, approach in education is really great. And it is really great on the all levels of uh, education, both informal and non-formal education. Uh, 
uh, my colleagues uh, and I uh, in Sumo State University at law faculty, we try to do it. We try to educate uh, future lawyers for democracy. We try to teach them to weight value and balance interests. They know that there is no strict uh, juridical solution for this problem. And the last quotation for today is the quotation of Kofi Annan. No one is born a good citizen. No nation is born a democracy. Rather, both are processes that continue to evolve over their lifetime. And uh, young people must be included from birth. So I think uh, that the education for democracy, uh, including uh, this project, uh, will be a, a real big ground for future European democracy. Thank you.